It's become very fashionable these past 3,000 years or so to develop your story with a certain structure. Okay, so originally you had Aristotle with his three acts, then you had Horace with five, and then Hollywood knocked it back to three again. You could argue that anybody who tries to criticize existing theory on structure is doing themselves a disservice because films and television use these structures and thrive. But your structural style is unique to you. It's not as obvious as your visual style, your choice of characters, your choice of genre. But if you pick a writer for a new series, one of the things that you'll notice as a viewer is the strange structure. They'll, they'll set events in a different order. They prioritize information differently. My aim is to teach you what structure your story should innately take. Next video. This video is just about theory and I'm just gonna wank on for ages about uh, books. Let's do some theory. You might have heard about the story circle or the story diamond or whatever fucking rhombus your story is meant to take. They relate to the hero's journey, which you may have heard of. So in the first half of the 20th century, famed anthropologist uh, Joseph Campbell wrote about the monomyth. He wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces that traced all human oral storytelling traditions. Uh, they said they all had this thing in common. It states that every culture tells a story in the same general way. And in this monomyth, all protagonists follow the structure of ordinary world, call to adventure, refusal of the call, meeting the mentor, crossing the threshold, tests allies and enemies, approach to the inmost cave ordeal, reward, season a sword, the road back, resurrection, and return with Alexa. If you look at uh, the film Avatar, for example, you got orphan, uh, wanderer, warrior, martyr. Orphan, oh, I'm a soldier guy, I'm gonna kill some bad guys. Uh, wanderer, oh, it sure made me feel bad killing those bad guys. Uh, warrior, oh, well, time to become one of the bad guys. And then martyr, oh, I'm gonna sacrifice myself and make everything okay again. So many books question the safety uh, of the monomyth concept and have found its supposedly universal uh, psychosocial journey kind of male specific. A variation, the heroine's journey, was then defined as having its own gestalt path, proving that stories for everyone are not necessarily for everyone. The problem with both of these journeys is the presupposition that there is a monomyth, that it exists. For Campbell's monomyth to work, it has to preoccupy itself with similarities and then explains differences or ways as just variations in the monomyth. It's the 1970s and George Lucas has just made Star Wars, um, arguably the most beloved film franchise of all time. Everybody looked at what he did. They were like, how did you do it? How did you make it so successful? They looked at the monomyth that he was following and were like, great, let's set all films along that path for decades. What they should have done was look at what George Lucas had done uh, with genre. He had looked at these genres that people really understood already. The, the swashbuckler, the romance, um, the World War II bombing run or dogfight. These were tense. They were, they, were, they were full of drama. George Lucas looked at what the audience already knew and understood, put a sci-fi spin on them, and then that was the source of his success. People looked at the monomyth and were like, oh, I okay, well, let's just follow this instead. So the monomyth gold rush came about, and one person selling shovels in a gold rush was Christopher Vogler, who in the 1970s was a script doctor. He looked at the, at the uh, monomyth and how it was anthropological in nature, and so he wrote a book that was filmic in nature. So he took the monomyth and applied it to film. His book, The Writer's Journey, charts 17 stages in a filmic hero's journey. I think it's useful and it's not. I think you should follow this and you shouldn't. It's good at first, it's not later. Dan Harmon, the creator of Rick and Morty, which we mention every fucking episode because it's the most successful Western adult animated series. He created the story Circle, which added some new variations to the concept. It defined the first and last quarters of the story as order, being spent in the original setting, and the second and third quarters as chaos, forming the journey. Dan doesn't adhere to his story religiously, and neither should you. In 2013, John York published a book called Into the Woods, Why Stories Work and Why We Tell Them, which I think is a masterwork and I urge you to read it. Into the Woods states that the five act story of storytelling favored by the Greeks and Romans mirrors the human way of sorting information from chaos into order. It says that stories arranged in this way tend to survive. It makes it extremely memorable for people to remember in a time before a written storytelling tradition. The five-stage thought process goes, human in a neutral mindset, human is confronted by the unknown, mysterious and chaotic. Human uses brain power to understand unknown. Unknown thing is defeated, understood, categorized. Human has corrected its ignorance and can inform other humans of new information. It's not that these stories are innately compelling, no. Campbell implied correlation with causation. He looked at all these surviving stories and thought, hmm, I wonder what connects these things. Could it be that they all survived? They were memorable. The brain really wants to correct flawed information for our survival, right? The brain files it under surprise and then we get a little hit of endorphins in the form of laughter. 
The brain really wants to correct flawed information. This explanation for the monomyth doesn't necessarily cancel it out. It's just an audience-centric explanation for a hero-centric concept. It doesn't tell you anything about what humans find innately courageous, not really. When Great Britain and the other uh, European superpowers were off ruining everything, uh, colonizing, you would find that if there was a salt deposit or uh, pepper trees, you would have local cultures using them in their cuisine. And in the same way that stories that are memorable survived at the oral history stage and got to the written history stage, cultures that were using an antibacterial, anti-malarial foodstuff tended to survive. The tendency to walk off into the dark and bring back useful information is useful to the group. If you found that courageous, if we lionized that kind of person, it would tend to give rise to new heroes who would go off and do that. Cultures who had stories about heroes tended to survive. And at the heart of it, hero-centric stories talk about the power of the human spirit. A human love of understanding. Isn't that that's so cool? Even science follows this structure. Mary Curie exposing herself to uh, dangerous radiation or the rewarding of once risky behavior like hoarding a grain store in order to plant the next season. It seems crazy at the time, but pays off later on. It's why we'll eventually colonize other planets, this need to venture into the dark and bring something back. Guidelines and monomyths are rules that uh, ask to be broken. They want you to study them in order to find exceptions, and you can bend all their hard and fast writing rules until you get something that you need. So, in short, five-act structure is prevalent because it's both innately memorable and a group survival aid. Now that you're free from the confines of act-based structure, do whatever the hell you like. Now that you know why we structure stories, you can go on to knowing how. See you next time for part two. As always, on Patreon, you can see part two a week early for a few dollars, but otherwise, I'll just see you here in a week.